down linear. So the cost has to be linear as well. So they say like that's using a horizontal scale. The basic idea for a horizontal scale is we just have a lot of cheap machine and we just link them together. So every time you see like, okay, we meet the limitation for the scale, let's just like add like one more machine. So in a horizontal way. So that's like the fantastic part for the horizontal scale. Let's see like for the decentralized award. So before 2018, uh, people trying to do what they want to increase, but increase the single chain. So they're saying like, I want to make a single chain faster. So how to do that? I will increase the block size, will reduce the block interval time, or we can use a new consensus. So depots by US or definitives, or a lot of projects say like, okay, proof of machine or BPOT or proof of history or proof of everything. So all these like new consensus, why they're doing that? They're trying to increase the single chain scalability. And what we do is we're trying to do horizontal. So basically, we will have multiple chains together instead of like one chain. So say like right now we have like five shards at five on chain. So we will process like all the transactions at the same time. Now you say like okay, we reach the scalability. We need like more scalability because we have more users. Okay, easily just simply add five more machine, uh, five more shards. Just like so, this is how we call it horizontal scale. So we can add the shards, which is the blockchain, infinitely. So we can reach the infinite scale for this thing. So that's the magic part for sharding. And one more thing, don't forget. Since we're like single blockchain, right? So right now, say like we're all using like POW or like POS, whatever. Now there's like a fantastic consensus came out. Let's just say it proof of X. And everyone is excited about that because it increased the single chain scalability. What should we do? Apply that. We can apply any consensus in a new blockchain. So which means we can do horizontal and vertical at the same time. But right now, we don't want to spend a lot of time waiting for this new consensus to be mature because everyone knows like, except for POW has been here for 10 years, POS probably a little bit longer, but other consensus is quite new, right? So it needs to have some time to demonstrate it's safe, it's secure, it works, right? So we don't want to spend time to waiting for that. We can still use the most simple ways just by adding like more shots. Later, when the technology came, becomes more true, let's just apply that, use that. Because we set up the infra, so it's not hard. Um, so right now, we already have our testnet. It launched in July 7th. So as you can see, um, there's about 256 shards, 50 clusters, um, over 6,000 nodes around the world in US West, US East, Europe, uh, and Asia. And uh, we have 129 nodes per cluster. Um, so the peak PPS is more than 14,000. So this is from the official numbers. Uh, and also we're going to have our testnet 2.0 very soon, uh, in probably like no, later November. So in this testnet, everyone could join, and also everyone could use POW to mine. So the pre-mine token will be converted into the mainnet token. Everyone has been asking me like, oh, what is the time for mining? I'm very excited trying to mine. So this is the time, not far away, very soon. So stay in our channel to, uh, for more information. Also, we're open source um, in, September, uh, in September. Just saw a lot of engineers here, uh, because you know I know for a lot of engineers, uh, so coding is a law. Uh, so if you guys have any interest, feel free to check our GitHubs, everything is there. And like I mentioned before, so more than 14,000 TPS, that's from the official number, because our setup is, uh, is quite like decentralized with that many nodes, like over 6,000 nodes. But we also have a competition for TPS. Um, so engineers who can just apply our code, but they need to set up their environments. We don't set up like a very strict row, like you have to have over like 6,000 like nodes or something, uh, but definitely so some of them have like five or 10 nodes or whatever. 
and then they try to like keep the highest TPS. So this is an old number actually. So the new number is uh, 55k. And um, it's over now, but if you guys have interest and if you're trying to beat that number, you still have the chance to earn one BTC pool. So you can go to our channel and to see how to join the TPS competition. Okay, um, so now um, I want to tell more about Quarkchain 2.0. So what is Quarkchain 1.0? I just mentioned before, right? So it's like a sharding technology that like, you know, um, a lot of blockchains using horizontal scalability. But for Quarkchain 2.0, actually, we not only want to use sharding to deliver a higher TPS, we also want to have a most flexible infra that could incorporate the state-of-the-arts innovation and satisfy need from a variety of industries. What does that mean? As you can see, at least a lot of um, you know very famous projects, they're all public chains, like Ether, Neo, EOS, or Cardano. Everyone knows for the public chain, there are always been four main parts. BVM, smart contracts, consensus, ledger, and token economics. So a different combination for these all four, we have a new public chain. So to be sure, sometimes if you just change like uh, consensus, you know, for Ether, and then probably some people can just write a white paper and say like, okay, let's do a new coin. So something like that. For these four or even like other public chain, what they try to do is they will have a good combination of these four, which they think is the right direction. But the important part is they're all fixed. So for example, for Ether, their VM is using EVM. And consensus is a POW. Right now they try to switch to POS, but it's a little bit hard because it's already fixed. And then Ledger is like either account base where you can sell and token economics, so they're doing like mining fee and a transaction fee, uh, pay for it like user. So something like that. So in short, for this four, it's fixed. What about for Quarkchain? For Quarkchain, like I mentioned before, it's like a two layer. So we always have a main, a root chain, and then we have a lot of shards. For each shards, they can support all VM, all smart contracts. And for each content, it's the same thing. So root chain is always POW for now. But for shards, it can be POW, POS, or any new consensus. So right now, there's a new consensus. Fantastic. Okay, the new blockchain, the new shard, I will use that. And for each shard, they can choose whatever ledger. They can also choose the token economics. So what does that mean? So that's what I mean by flexibility. So we want to give the industry, we want to give whatever, because we will support like the apps or like, you know, the uh, vertical like blockchain or other project. We want to give them the right. If they think they want these four combination, not A, B, C, D, but A, B, D, X or something, then we will do for that. They can easily set up whatever they think is the best for them. Why are we doing this? Like I mentioned before, the technology is always growing. So right now, people think EVM is great. But that doesn't mean in the next year, there will not come out a new VM, a new smart contract machine, a smart contract machine, virtual machine or something. So maybe there's something came out. So if you cannot adapt to the new technology, well, that means like you're left behind, right? So either you have to adapt to that or in the fundamentally, you can easily change to that. So that's how we see like we can adopt to the new technology. And also, like I mentioned before, so different, I can go back, but, so different industry may have like different needs. So this is what I mean by, you know, for the shard one, we will have like EVM, POW, a canvas, exactly like the Ether setup. And then for shard two, one project say like, I do want to use depots. Um, so that's a good for us. I don't want to use POW or like uh, POS. Yeah, sure. 
let's just use POW, the depots. And then in this one saying like, okay, so I actually want to use some XBM, some new virtual machine, which is just newly came out, but it's good for our project. Sure, we can definitely do that. Yeah, so it's very flexible. Also, I want to spend a little bit of time about what I mean by the token economics, like I mentioned before. So you can also decide your token economics. People may get confused. Wait, so I build on top of blockchain. So how can I determine that? Because we're not a ERC-20 token. So all the token built on top of blockchain is native token. So native token, what does that mean? Basically, people know that. So um, if you're just using like user or like other public chain to generate your own token. So your own token cannot pay transaction fee, right? Because in the gas fee, you can only use like user to pay or like other uh, public chain using their token to pay. Also, so you cannot use that for ICO. So I'm trying to raise money. That not necessarily means like you give me the token, I will, I will not accept that. But the smart contract is not easy to set up that. But for the native token, so we give the right of ICO, we also give the right of uh, transaction fee all to that token. So to be honest, we don't care. You have to use QKC for transaction fee or use QKC uh, for like ICO. We give all the rights to you. And even if you're the token built on top of us, you still have all the advantage. So sometimes we joke like, you know, all the public chain can be built on top of us. Why? Because they have all the benefits. Everything can use themselves for ICO. They can also use themselves to pay transaction fee. But what's a good, why do they need to build on top of us? Because they don't need to worry about the storage, worry about like TPS. We can just use like one, two, three, four shards for them to use specifically and no other chain to use. And if they need like more, we can give them like four more or like 10 more. So, you know, as a public chain, she can still work with us. That's our like logic. Um, yeah, some easy part uh, for you guys who never know us before, we already traded um, on Binance in the day one in June. And we have a very uh, big like global communities um, for Chinese, English, Korean, Japanese, and Russia. Um, also, we're going to launch a global ambassador program soon. So if you have any interest, don't forget to follow our channel and we will have the, all the news through there. And this is our investors um, from like different countries. Also, like what I mentioned before, um, so right now we haven't launched our main yet. Uh, but we already open source, our partner already checked how they can work with us and this over like 50 um, partners, so they're not only the apps. Um, I know for most of like the public chain, they only work with the apps. For us, we work with the apps, layer 2, and also what we call uh, vertical public chain. Um, so there's their public chain, they want to specify in some area. For example, they specify in the gaming area, um, they want to do a public chain because they want to have the advantage of doing ICO, of building their own ecosystems, getting uh, the transaction fees, but we enable them to do everything because they're generating the native tokens to us. Um, so what we do is, you can imagine, there are like a hundred different blockchain. So the first of four is for a gaming vertical public chain. It's only for that. And then the next six is for uh, probably like a finance decentralized exchange like public chain. Uh, and then, you know, the rest of them is for any DFs. Some, so we don't mind the DFs built on top of us directly or be built on top of like the gaming or whatever. Because we only want to focus on the infra, to provide the infra. We're not expert for the gaming, not expert for like the vertical industry. I, I definitely know there will be other people who are expert for that. So they have more knowledge. They know what people really need for those industry. But our advantage is we have best knowledge for the infra. So we want to provide the TPS, the storage and everything 
about the setups, so they don't need to worry about the bottom. They only worry about okay how to add like more feature to attract like more the apps on top of them. So we're fine and very happy to work with this kind of collaboration as well. Um, yeah, so pretty much that's like the whole speech. Very short, right? So any questions? Uh, I'm sorry for my lack of understanding, but as I understand, like blockchain provides a uh, kind of a hosting solution or like hosting the infra for other blockchain uh, to be in, in, in new. Is that correct? My understanding is like, for example, an EOS and Ripple or uh, any other blockchain can be in one of your shards. Yes. Uh, I mean, theoretically, yes. Yeah, yeah so theoretically, yes, but yes. it's not really about the hosting. Um, if you provide the info, you go like the Google Cloud or the Azure for having other solution hosted on it. Um, the thing is, oh, by the way, um, I'm your friendly blockchain engineer in Jack and For we're not so essentially hosting is an interesting way to look at this problem, but we're not a company, we're not building a chain that you know one button add the blockchain or something like that. It's like the whole thing adding a adding a shard, like adding a chain is still consensus level change for the blockchain. So it still needs like community and probably hard work. But adding a chain, we're not doing something like just, you know, whoever has a new chain idea, you can just publish a chain. The thing Anthony mentioned is we have the ability to adapt to the, the latest technology to have a new shard once it's, you know, our consensus approved it, our community supports it, go through that process, we'll have a new chain. Yeah. Oh, but you're still hosting somebody else's no. chain. You're not having your own chain, right? No, no, no. So we're not hosting that. that that's something clear. We're not hosting. Everything is part of the blockchain. So adding a shard with a new consensus, that's also part of the blockchain. We're not hosting other people's code. We're ho not hosting other people's blockchain. But basically, it's still it's part of it. If you want to add a, add a new chain, add a new shard, yeah, it's a core, but not using add a new chain. Add a new shard, still consensus chain. Still have to have hard work. So let me just simply um, the way. So basically, we're two layers. So there is a root chain, and then there is shards. So one shard equal to like one blockchain. And then, so why, so right now all the shards can all be peeled up, right? So right now we have like 10 shards. And then we can always add more shards. When we add one more shards, you can define whatever like consensus or ledger or like economics or whatever you like. So when you define, you can define a very easy like shards, exactly the same as easy. So can support like so user can so anything user can support this shard can support as well. So if like a DX try to um, you know migrate, it can easily migrate because everything set up is exactly the same. Yes. And then but yeah. the notes the, 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 the who adds the chain part, like who actually does that. So for example, we have the configuration for each shard doing what kind of consensus. What you're doing is you want to add a new chain. You are adding a new configuration to the part, right? To get, add a new part to the configuration. That part is a consensus change. Yes, you can add whatever consensus you want, but that still needs to, you know, it's hard work. If you add it, if you change the configuration, it's hard work. That's basically, yeah, just to clarify the question. Okay. Sure. So like for example, um, I don't know if you guys heard, so there's a pretty um, interesting New consensus for the Avalanche. Brian, you know, Professor, I mean, lives there from Cornell. And that's pretty interesting. And looking into, you know, is that possible we implement this consensus as one of our shards? And that's pretty, because that's a really interesting consensus and really has come towards in our framework. So it means that you have multiple shards and each one has its own technology. It could be. Could be. Theoretically, yeah. yes. But for now, everyone wants the ETH and as a few other chain. They are the same. But, uh, they're homogeneous. But I mean, the point is they can be heterogeneous. Yeah, we just want to make it flexible. Because um, I think for a lot of publishers, <coughs> they're great. Great for now. But what if later, so when people have different needs, with the technology change, then your infra has to be flexible to change, to adapt. So from an adoption point of view, you would still need to hard for them to the new share. Yes. It's not that it's, it's compatible, but it's not like, you know, the entire chain 
uh, and the other shards can start being used uh, exactly. as well by communicating via the blue layer. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Like, but adding a new chain is totally different from you know, changing the current chain, right? Yeah. The latter is like, literally probably impossible for many of the chains, but yeah. for us, it's basically adding a new shard from history, start of history, so it's like doable. Oh, yeah, exactly. So you're right. Yeah. So can you have transactions between shards as well, and also if they're using different technology? Yes, like if we have the clear definition of the you know cross shard uh, transaction format API, um, that's doable. But for now, the cross shard the cross shard transaction is not really have the clear API definition. So it's still doable, but it goes through something we call a cross shard deposit idea. Um, so for now, my answer for that question is we can do cross shard transaction for homogeneous chains. Um, once we have a really clear API definition for you know the cross shard um, communication, we can do cross shard transaction with, with any you know shards. What about uh, communication with other networks? Let's say that's not in our roadmap. You, you know, like you're, you're talking about the cross chain. Yeah, cross chain. Yeah, like okay. Ethereum, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think we have some partnership doing that, but it's not our, you know, it's not our top priority for doing that. Which yeah, means we'll worry about that. We'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I see that your code is in Python, but it was like a big disclaimer there that it's only for testing and it's only for testnet. And then you say that you are on uh, Binance already. Yeah, are, you, are you on mainnet already? No, we're not. Okay. We're not. So on what is trading on Binance then? That's a yeah, it's in Python. Okay. Yeah, so the main uh, will come at um, the end of the year, or Q1 next year. So when it came online, so we will swap. Okay. We're going to have our own wallet as well, so okay. the swap will be easier. So after the swap, so you're not going to have the ERC20 token, you're going to have the real QPC token. And like I mentioned before, all the tokens generated through Quark Chain will also have the same benefit as QPC. It's like a native token. Okay. In the uh, quark chain universe, you are listing 50 projects in three months. Are these 50 projects currently being developed on uh, the testnet, or are these use cases that you're trying to point out, or how should I see that slide? That's not very clear to me. Um, yeah, so there has like different stage for this like 50 project. So some of them already you know built on other public chain. So when we uh, you know launch the mainnet, so they can easily just um, develop because if they're built on top of like Ether, it's very easy to do that. But so some are these projects committed to build on Quark chain, or are you oh. just listing the use listing the use cases here? That, yeah. That these because you're listing a couple of logos yeah. there as well from products that are already well established on other change uh, to, uh, blockchain. <coughs> so are these projects committed to start building on Quark Chain? Yeah, so these are all the partners. So we had an agreement. Um, so we ex so some of them are not EX. I just want to be short. For example, like Seller. Yeah. So Seller is like a very good partner, but not they're not like DX. So we just work very closely um, to say like different like area, like off-chain or off-chain. So some of them had this um, example as well. But some of them are like the DX, uh, like I mentioned before. So DX will be found it easy or faster, uh, but as I mentioned, so some of the DFs are still under uh, building as well themselves. So we have to wait for them to finish building and then build on top of us. So everything you have listed here have actually partnerships with yeah. Quarching. Yep. Um, so if uh, different shops can host their own the VM for uh, smart contracts, so how are those smart contracts with the cross chart uh, implications? Exactly, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, like for now, we only support like shards with the same content to the same VM because, because right, right now they are doing the same thing. Um, for cross chart transaction with arbitrary consensus, arbitrary VM, we really need to like think deeper to have a clear, defined uh, API, but that's not our um, uh, like milestone right now. But it's, I mean, from the architecture point of view, cross charge transaction is always the bottleneck for performance. That's why we have our own idea of you know how people.
people actually use a blockchain. Like we try to reduce the use of cross chain transaction as much as possible. Um, because yeah, it's it's it's, it's it hurts people. It's basically the the alcohol level that I mentioned. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's a part half of synchronized. Yeah. But just adding, like on uh, uh, answering the point as well, like we are we are building, uh, we are like a partner with the blockchain, and uh, uh, we think it's very interesting to integrate because uh, they have a uh, quite novel sharding solution, and the blockchain solutions uh, we could accelerate uh, the cross chain transaction by building different uh, channels across different shards. For example, that's like the one very concrete thing that we're we're doing and discussing. Are there uh, these project, these fifty projects? Are there uh, ICOs in there? Uh, yes, there are. For example, like Stellar have done their ICO yes, right? You can expect that. Um, and some of them haven't done ICO. To be honest, I don't remember exactly. Um, yeah, but for example, like one project, MXC, um, it's like a German project. They just finished the ICO. They're going to hitting exchange uh, at the end of this month. So like I mentioned, some of them already finished like ICO has been uh, even older than us. Some of them, you know, uh, just finished ICO. Some of them are waiting for ICO. Yeah, so it's like different stage. Okay, and um, uh, will there also be, um, uh, sorry. Um, the funds, will they be raised in quad chain tokens also, or is that not the case? That's a good question, you know, we tried to do that before, but uh, we are told um, this is like a big risk for security token uh, under the SEC. Mm -hmm. So we just stop everything. Um, until the mainland, we're not going to do that. But after the mainland, so people can use our uh, you know, public chain to generate their own token. Like, uh, the, in addition to this question, uh, the MXC uh, fundraising was in uh, Ethereum. Uh, how could the blockchain provide uh, some uh, something with MXC? How, how should I see that? Like, it's not, like, I couldn't place it. Oh, sorry, I don't. Uh, I don't find the, the ICO MXC. Yeah. It's it, it's uh, you're reliable uh, on each other, but mm -hmm. the, the fundraising of MXC was in Ethereum. Yes. So what's blockchain going to provide for that? Oh, oh, good cool question. So basically, what we provide um, for our partners, right? And so the first one is like the technology, because um, like um, what I just mentioned before, so our sharding technology is advanced, and uh, we try to work with different like project who really need a scalable solution for for them. <coughs> and the second one is um, since we are already you know finished like a lot of steps, so we can give them some advice about how to for for, for them like how to do like a good idea. Because uh, uh, we need a we need a big ICO in June. There's about 60k people who joined our ICO, and uh, 5,000 who have got um, about like one Ether like uh, you know uh, quota for their like investments. Uh, we have some really interesting. It's like a gamification uh, for the process to attract a lot of people. Um, all this like experience and uh, can just you know share with our partners, and also our investors is around the world like Asia, uh, you know U.S., Europe, and uh, in different places. Some of them still need to find racing. So for the good product, we do want to support them and by introduce them to different uh, investors uh, for investments. Um, and uh, we see so I'm Chinese. But we came from the Silicon Valley, so which means we're but we both know like the U.S. and the China best. Um, so if they need any um, help for partnership or for like um, something, we always be their good like you know connection for these two points. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Any else questions? Maybe uh, about the token entries. I guess you had. Um, so first I want to correct, it's a little bit over 
over 10 percent. But you know, um, there's so the coin market cap always have different way for calculation. Um, so they calculate some exchange or something. So it's always under the real um, circulation. And the second one is uh, we had an announcement um, in September. Uh, previously, for the private sale, we have like 20 percent sold to our private sale and also public sale. So private sale token should be, um, you know, released every month as a plan. Uh, but um, all the private sale token plus the team, the foundation, and everything has been locked until <coughs> next June. Um, so that's why you didn't see it increasing like every month. So it will stay here until next June. So how much the proportion for team for uh, like private sale? Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. So 20% is for sale. It's public sale plus private sale. And um, is it 15%? That's not good. Yeah, let's look at the real number. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm wrong. Well, it's a good thing they don't know about this because they focus on the project. <laughs> <laughs> I forget it, yeah. I almost forget it. But, So 20% is for sale, 15% for team, lock up uh, to two years. Um, foundation is 15%, 5% for advisor, and the mining community is uh, 45%. So as I mentioned before, we're going to have 2.0 soon. So we're going to do the mining. This is like a free mine. It will be converted into the mainland token after the mainland. Uh, for the private investors who got a lock up on their tokens and uh, the public sale investors who didn't get a lock up on their tokens what's the what's the profit for the private investors who uh, because uh, they are uh, they have a lock up on their tokens for a certain amount of time yeah um, i can no see well, if they um like uh, public sale investors if they if they look at public sale invest, uh, investors and who, who didn't get any lockup? Was there any re reaction to that, or how did they? Who they how did they respond to that? Um, or did they knew before? Of course, everyone knows that at the very beginning. But like the the lockup was changed <coughs> like a few weeks ago, right? Uh, no, on September. Uh, September, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. But it was like what I heard. It was um, something like uh, what you said until next June they will get the next proportion instead of monthly. So wasn't that uh, a bit of a, an argument with the, the pre-sale? Yeah, um, so this is two separate questions. So for the first one, so you're asking me, so why the private sale investor want to do that? They have like a longer lock of time compared with the public sale. Um, I think it's normal for all the crypto projects. First, public sale investor only have a very small portion. Like for us, they have wide ether like quota for investments. Uh, if you truly believe in the project, think it will be great, you want to invest more. So that's like a basic logic. But for the private sale, they definitely can invest much more than that because we only have the institution investor for the pop, uh, for the private sale. Um, because you know, for the private sale, we actually got ten x more than what we want. Um, we pick someone very carefully. So we want the ones who can be long-term partners with us, who can provide a resource about ecosystem, and who are, we also want to be um, diversified, like worldwide support. Okay? <coughs> so that's like the rule how we select um, them. And also as a private investor, you got you know discount as well. So we listed here. Um, so. For, as you can see, private sale and public sale, they have different bonus. So, yeah, that's like an incentive. Okay. And, yeah. And for your questions, um, so it had be complicated. So the most of the reason for that is because of the US law change about, uh, you know, SEC had a really, you know, complicated requirements about reselling. Um, so we, 
consulted the lawyer and did all this change according to the request. And uh, uh, a lot of you know project has done that before. Um, so we're not like the first one. Just trying to be um, as careful as possible because we're in the U.S. Uh, there has been you know a lot of law change. Uh, before we do that. We do, you know, discuss with all the private sale investors uh, before the announcements and go there, uh, you know, um, understanding. Uh, otherwise, without their help, we cannot, you know, have that announcement. Yeah, because it's not only for private sale um, investor, the team, the foundation, and everything. Uh, we all have the same, uh, you know, extension. And we had an article. That article lists the token and the address. So everyone who can always go to check the address to see whether uh, you know, the token number change or not. Yeah. So it's very transparent. Because we try to be as transparent as possible. Oh, what was the reason to change the local period? I just made oh, sorry. So it goes to law. Yeah. The regulation. I would say regulation more correctly because there's no correct law for that until now. Yeah, because yeah, you know previously um, we issue our um, ICO in uh, Singapore. So but we are based in US. Previously it's okay. Um, so it seems like US law doesn't apply to uh, US like regulation doesn't apply to this kind of company. But uh, now as long as you're in US, then it affects you a lot. You have to be really careful. Everyone knows, like the crypto world, things change really fast. So you know, previously you can you can do like L job. So for us, a lot of community members say like, oh, why you guys don't do L job? Because uh, because according to the U.S. like regulation, so L job is not allowed to do that. So um, so we know trying to you know had like a clear yes or no from our uh, lawyer to teach us and guide us how should we do that before we fully convince like okay this is the right way we're not doing anything that's you know the regulation not proven yeah. Yeah, socializing and mingling and uh, we have space for at least an hour. Thank you.